All right, we live now. All right, we live. We here. Thank you guys for joining us, checking in with Bronx Fathers Taking Action. We're here live today for this wonderful Women's History event. Let's give our team some time to check in. Give our people some time to check in. Hey, all right, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're celebrating Women's History Month today. Thank you for joining us. I see my man, Big John. What's up, Big John? I see Angel of God. I see Animal Drive. Thank you so much. Today is a special day. All right, I see you. Jasmine Marie right there. It's, look, it's a whole team. People coming through to support. What's up, y'all? Bronx Fathers taking action. Today is a special day because we celebrate Women's History Month. And it's also special because not only am I doing it, but I get to celebrate my lovely little woman that I created. Come on, Ariana. Say hello. <laughs> And we will be blessed with a very special guest today. Our special guest will be none other than the borough president of the Bronx, Miss Vanessa Gibson. So we're going to clap. We're going to clap for the air for the people that's not here. That's right. We'll see Bronx education. Uh, uh, uh. Make sure we look nice. Ariana, jump in. Let them see you. Let the people see you. Here we go. Excellent. Excellent. So how do you feel today? feel good. You feel good? Yes, my little mini-me is here. That's right. You feel good? All right, so you're talking to a lot of people. It's people joining, people checking us out, knowing that this is going to be a great event today. Um, we get to, and, and it's really cool because we do it together. And we're talking to the borough president. Do you know anything about this new borough president? I know you knew Ruben Diaz, but do you know anything about the new borough president? Um, that she's the first woman and the first African-American woman. Oh, that's two firsts. Not one, but two first. That's good. Somebody did their homework. <laughs> Not one, but two first. Somebody did their homework. That's excellent. That's excellent. So we'll be happy to see her. Um, and then we'll, and I think it's important, right? Because she's the Bronx World President. And being from the Bronx and in the Bronx, it's important to talk to the people that help lead the Bronx, right? Look, well, giving a shout out right there. I'm going to give you a shout out. <laughs> so that's cool. Everybody can hear us. This is our little test run because once the, uh, Bro, president jumps on, you know, we want to make sure everything is coming in clear. You got good Wi-Fi, good background. We we coordinated. I don't know if you guys see that. Some coordination going on here, you know. <laughs> That's right. It's a legacy. This is a legacy. That's right. Shout out. Shout out to the, we got sub media, media down there. We see y'all. Thank you so much. And um, everybody share this because, you know, the borough president, just to have access to her, I think is a wonderful thing. And she'll be giving us some insight on the future of the Bronx and, you know, what does she have in store and how she sees things kind of going forward. And I think it's really cool that she's taking time out of her busy schedule. Right. And, you know, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today as well. Because <laughs> you took time to be a part of this and um, this is going to be really cool. So it's cool. It's cool. We get to do stuff together. We get to do stuff together. We get to see stuff. You know, to be a dad group, to be celebrating women, I think is is really excellent. Especially me being a, a a girl dad, I really feel honored to be part of the celebration. And shout out to all the girl dads out here, <laughs> all the girl dads, all the fathers of future queens, you know, madam presidents. You know, shout out to all of you guys. Uh, to all my brothers with daughters. And then um, shout out to everybody out here raising sons and, and, and double shout out if you got both of them, you know? <laughs> Is there anything you want to say before we get started? All right, cool. All right, well, just sit sit tight. The borough president will be joining shortly. See my guy Swagger Dad is in the building. Shout out to you, you know? This is good. See, we got a whole community of support. I think it's important that people see that because it's not just one dad. When you see me, see all the dads. See all the dad groups in different boroughs. We got dads in Philly, Philly groups coming here. We got dads from Staten Island, dads throughout the whole entire city. And I think, um, you know, just when you look at it as a whole, just as fathers, we're always trying to, you know, really just show up and let people know how much of a presence that we play. So times like this where I get to represent that, it really means so much to me, you know, mm. for real. So shout out to all the dads. Real men do real, real things, even when it's not easy, especially when it's not easy. 
So this is going to be really cool. You guys are going to get a little bit of history. This is probably one of the coolest people because uh, this borough president, one really cool thing about her, she really, uh, really went through the whole like process. She has occupied. She's been a city council person. She's been a state assembly person. And to, to integrate all of that and then to represent and, and advocate on behalf of the Bronx, uh, we're really fortunate to have a person with that much experience in that position. So um, that's something that we're really going to be happy to talk about. Um, and, and celebrate all the women too. Celebrate all the moms, all the moms, because without moms, there'd be no dads. You know what I'm saying? So, so shout out, <laughs> shout out to all the moms. <laughs> shout out to all the moms. <laughs> we need, we need the women. We shout out y'all. I want you to know that, that as on behalf of all dads, we celebrate moms. You know, we need moms, moms. Y'all play a very integral part into everything that we do, you know? The more moms, the merrier. You know, <laughs> shout out to moms. <laughs> I made myself laugh. Sorry about that. <laughs> so this is going to be cool. This is a, that's right. Without them, there's no us. That's all I'm trying to say. This is very, it's a balance of things. This is good. We need it this time right here. Help us get our nerves out. Mm -hmm. For real. What's up, for real? So, is there any other histor historical facts that you know about the, the borough president? Um, any other information that you know? No. All right. Well, I, I share some information. She's from the Bronx. Yeah, right? That kind of goes without <laughs> saying, right? And I think she's from, the, she's from the beloved west side of the Bronx, which is cool. You know, um, Kingsbridge, but you know, that south Bronx side. Uh, west Jerome, that side. Uh, where um, grandma and grandma is from on that side, you know? So I think that's pretty cool. I think it's cool to have people from the community be a part of the, the change of the community, um, you know? And I and you know it's funny because I, I just saw somebody earlier this week, I wanna say, uh, my friend my friend Angel Hernandez, shout out to Angel Hernandez from the um, Botanical Gardens and a Bronx historian, shout out to him. And, um, you know, we were talking about how we're from the Bronx and how we get to represent the best parts of the Bronx. And everybody that's in the Bronx right now, you guys all hold a pen or a pencil or a crown and you help shape and change or color in what the Bronx gets to be. So I think that's like a really cool thing, you know? So just shout out to everybody that's in a position, you know, whether you're an educator, a teacher, an admin, you know, whether you're working for an elected official or community group, whether you're working in an office, you know, or a college, you know, um, Shout out to Mercy College. You know, I got to shout out mm -hmm. the people that work with me. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> shout out to Mercy College. Um, you know, great inst institution. It's a great place in the Bronx. Um, but we're all working to shape and kind of show the best parts of the borough. So I think that's really cool. And shout out to the children, right? Shout out to our kids, you know, because these people right here, this is the future. This, these right here, they're, they're, they're in it. That's right. Go nonprofits. That's right. That's my people that's putting in the real work. Those are the people that's saying work, putting in the work and not even expecting thank yous. So we're going to say thank you to those people. What's up? Okay. And shout out to the kids, like I said, because they're the future. So um, to our kids who are so adaptable throughout the school year. Um, and the parents of those children throughout this, the school year where we had COVID and had to bring them back and we had to adapt and the parents teaching at home while working full time jobs and helping the kids get good grades. Shout out to you guys. And we're going to celebrate all the parents. It's Women's History Month. We're celebrating all the y'all this whole time right now. You know, while you're waiting for the borough president, she's on way. Don't worry. Schedule permitting. We're going to celebrate all the parents. Take a second. That's right. Take a second. Celebrate the parents. Come on, clap it up. We giving out homework, we checking homework, we making sure y'all did your homework, stuff like that. And, um, you know, and even me as a dad, doing homework is not always an easy thing, but we, we make it a priority, right? <laughs> we, make, we make it a priority, and we only laugh because it's true. This is a priority, so... Even if you're hanging out, watching TV, or mm. even if you, you know, spend quality time, I know it's not easy to do everything at the same time, but, you know, education has to be a priority because education is that thing that uh, that opens the door. It, it turns the key, and it makes a difference in the lives of our children. So, you know, stay on top of that. You know, it's a, it's a blessing if they go further than the places that we've gone. So I try my best to, 
make education a priority. So after this, we're doing homework. You heard? After this, we're doing homework. <laughs> finishing it. We're finishing it. After this, we're finishing the homework. <laughs> That's right. The lessons are in every exchange. That's right. <laughs> the lessons are in every exchange. That's right. This is class right now. I couldn't have said that better myself. And you know, um, really cool, really cool. My my wonderful daughter, she's in a program right now, which I encourage uh, everybody who has um, you know, as grade school children, uh, called Prep for Prep, and um, it's really helping her apply for um independent schools and giving her opportunities. And you know, um, we can't take for granted as parents the things that our children do to help put themselves in better positions in life. So, uh, shout out to every parent that's working hard and getting their kids to see. The, uh, a whole another option because I just think as a parent leader mentor I think the best thing you could give your kids is perspective so shout out to everybody that's giving out perspective here we go look our, our room is filling up shout out to everybody joining in shout out to everybody joining in Some somebody saying HW I think they saying how wonderful <laughs> <laughs> All right, that new math is no joke. That's right, Big John. That new math is no joke. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? It's a game show, but it's in your house. <laughs> it's a game show at the kitchen table every night. Are you smarter than a fourth grader? I feel it's what grade you in? Fifth grade. He says, are you smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> That's what I play. <laughs> and I try to stay sharp. <clears throat> stay on top of that. Okay, look, here we go. There we go, look, some wonderful, some education corps helping out the youth in the Bronx and the South Bronx on Saturdays. We need you at Katrona Cadets. All right, you hear that? Everybody follow, send and send some love. And matter of fact, you might could be featured on the next one. Let's get your information out into the community. That's important. I want people to see what we're talking about. Uh, she's coming shortly. What you mean you can't leave? You got to stay here and stay with the people, though. <laughs> The people they need you. They probably want to hear from you. You got any? Do you have any perspective as a as a fifth grader or just a child? Like, how has it been throughout the school year and just like adapting? It's been fine. It's the same as last week, except we just went remote for a year. That's that's true. I mean, so, I have a different teacher and I have different friends. Yeah. Oh, different teachers and different friends. Has it been easy? Like. Um, maintaining the relationships, like friendships, from being remote to then being back in school? Um, when I was remote, I only stayed in touch with probably two of my friends. That's it. Mm. So being in person, being in person makes it easier for you to stay in relationships with people? Yeah, it makes it much easier. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I think that's important that, um, you know, just having friends and being able to be in school, you know, helps you keep your relationships a little bit better. I love that. I love that. Is there anything that you would say to people that are um, that are looking to, you know, going into the next school grade or even like yourself, right? This is your last fifth grade. What's, what's like, what's next? Like, like, hmm, the future looks like. I don't know. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's fair. Well, we got opportunity. Plenty of time to think about it. Yeah. And I'm going to talk with the wonderful people that are going to help us make that future possible. Um, you know, our leaders and people who have uh, and there's wonderful people that we can learn from. So I think this is going to be a really cool thing. And I'm um, looking forward to what's next. Two, two, two. So, without further ado, thank you everyone who has shown some patience. I think the matter at hand, the time has come for us to make this even more festive. Thank you everybody for their uh, patience and everybody for waiting and joining. Ah, and here we go. None other than our borough president, Madam Vanessa Gibson. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, what's up? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Marcus Payne, Bronx Fathers Taking Action. This is one of my wonderful daughter, Ariana Payne. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day um, just to celebrate this wonderful Women's History Month with us. 
Um, we are so excited to have you here. And hey, you look so nice. <laughs> uh, we wanted to congratulate you. So first off, congratulations on becoming the first uh, female president of the Bronx. You know, what does it mean to be such a trailblazer? Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. And it's good to see you. And I want to thank the Bronx Fathers in Action for hosting today's conversation series. Uh, we've been doing it a few times since we started at the beginning of this year. Oh, we're going to keep it smooth. Make sure we get it back. Of course, of course. Came to bring her on. All right, just a little brief. All right, cool. Everything back smooth. All right, we lost the people, but we got the people back. The people are still with us. I don't know if it was us. Oh, it wasn't us. Okay, great. So we're still here. Everybody just stand by. Thank you. Shout out to you guys. Okay, excellent. All right, everything's back on track. Thank you guys for being patient and staying with us. This is what yes, we're back. Hey. All right, here we go. We still here. Oh, <laughs> uh, you sound low. Hold on. Let me fix the volume here. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I got cut off. I was like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> But thank you, Marcus, and thank you to all the Bronx Fathers taking action for hosting today's virtual series. Uh, we've had a series of virtual conversations uh, since the beginning of this year, and I'm really grateful for you for moderating today's conversation, but also for all the men of Bronx Fathers taking action. Shout out to the education team for his leadership and really, you know, cultivating this incredibly important group of young fathers that represent the borough of the Bronx. Um, this is an organization and a collaboration very near and dear to the heart of our former borough president, Ruben Diaz Jr. And I'm excited in my new role as the borough president to continue the great work of empowering and really uplifting and amplifying the voices of so many of our fathers in the Bronx. Um, they're too often undervalued, underappreciated for the work they do every day as fathers, as role models, nurturing their children, but also everybody else's children. But we just wanna make sure that you know we see you, we see you men, we see you raising your children, we see you as husbands, as fathers, single fathers, doing it with a partner. We see you during times of uncertainty, during times of great challenge, you are really out there. And we want this collective, the Bronx Fathers, taking action to really be a source of encouragement and a source of strength for you and your family. Um, so as you ask, it's, it's an honor to be the first African-American, to be the first woman president and this is March during Women's History Month. And I'm reminded of the importance of so many pioneers that have come before me that have paved the way for me and so many others. I stand on their broad shoulders for all the great work they've done, their contribution. And I am really my ancestors' wildest dream. I'm full of their hopes and all for really a better tomorrow. And the impact that women have had on our society as champions first responders, as essential workers, yes. front staff, healthcare workers, everyday shields that have stepped up, that have never gotten the attention, the credit that they rightfully deserve. And how powerful we have fathers and brothers stand at our side. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a strong woman at your side. And make <laughs> sure that you can stand with her, allow her to lead, but also know that you play a role, right? This is all about partnership. This is all about teamwork, and this is all about advancing the issues that we, know we all care about. Um, and so many of our young girls look up to their fathers, right? They are the first educators for their children. And for me, my dad, my father was my hero. He was Caribbean from the island of Trinidad, TNT, and he was, loved me. I'm his oldest, I'm a baby girl. 
And, you know, he loved me. And he was the first man in my life. And although he transitioned in 2012, he succumbed to cancer, like so many of our men do. And that's, that's another topic we need to talk about, cancer, prostate, and cancer, and making sure that men get tested. Early detection is so important for men. Um, and my dad, fortunately, had lung cancer. And, but he was my first father. He was my first teacher. He was the man of life. Um, and although he's not here physically, I have an uncle, uh, my mom's brother, who is a man who is a teacher for me. Um, and I'm really grateful to have, you know, men in my life. It's just been really an honor serving as the first woman. While it, I am the first to be the last, and I want to make sure that we cultivate a new generation of leaders. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. Hey, if you're watching this, if you're scrolling, let's put a fist, put some claps on. Let us know. Feel the love. Put some hearts on that in the comments. We like that energy. And then you said so much. Um, just from spinning TTs, you know, um, you know, Lauren, one of our Bronx fathers taking actions, he's definitely represents those islands and what a beautiful place. Um, I've definitely been in the nylon pool myself. And and my daughter right here, this is my oldest. So um, you know, firstborn is just so much respect, just so much responsibility that comes with that. So um, you know, uh, class is in session, as they say, right now. So, right. Um, and <clears throat> I love what you said, just in terms of being your ancestors' dreams, and and um, and I, I think that kind of leads us to our next place, right? Because we know that you're the first woman to become the Bronx Borough President, but um, and first African American. But in many ways, um, you know, how important was it having Deputy President uh, Arroyo Green as your mentor throughout your career, and just the role that she played to, to kind of knock down these doors that we are able to watch you step through, right? Yeah, no, it was important that as a woman of truth, I've learned that God is working all the time and he's constantly, you know, putting us in place where he needs us to be. And for me, a really good thing was not only a political mother, but a political mentor. Every young person needs a mentor in their life. Your parents are your first educators and your models, but you also a, a circle of support, whether it's your teachers, your advisors, it's a mentor. Really gave me an opportunity. I was an intern back in college at yeah, Albany. When I graduated, she gave me a job. And I realized later she saw a lot of herself in me. She saw a younger generation and a younger version of herself when she was my and it was important for her to not only a seed, but to make sure that that seed could grow. And as mothers and fathers and leaders and role models, we are literally planting seeds that are our children so they can grow and be nurtured and be the next generation of leaders. We're doing this work so that their future is brighter and their journey is as hard as ours has been, right? So labor, we labor in the vineyard, in the battlefields, right? We go through some things and we will fight for our kids, but it's because they are the next generation. And we have to remove those barriers and remove those hurdles and just remind young people that we love them, we support them here, and that they are destined for us. So Aurelia Green was excellent for me. Those of you, you know, in the Bronx uh, circle, in the political circle know how much she meant to me. And unfortunately, she transitioned to May, and she was only 86 years young. But I'm so grateful to have learned and, and you know, been nurtured under her and to have been a plant that she, you know, groomed and that, uh, that grew. And now it's my turn with the like left to plant the next seed for the next generation of leaders. Mm, that's right. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. There you go. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that love? Y'all hear the love? It's about love and legacy, right? And then being like the product. And that's why it's so important for, to have as many hands in as we can, right? Because we're all trying to grow and nurture and cultivate not only our children before you got here. I was just saying that, you know, this is the next generation. And, you know, that's why it's so important to kind of lift as we climb, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we work with MBK and my brother's keeper and things mm -hmm. like that we really think it's important to, to lift as we climb. So in that spirit, I'm going to, I'm going to ask my daughter to, to lead the next question. Sure. So, I'm out of there. What's your point? Good point? When you look back today and while you was growing up, how do you think your father impacted your life on right now? That's a great question. I think 
my dad played a major role. Um, although I lived with my mom most of the time um, as a child and as a teenager, uh, my mom was my is my queen. My mom is still with us today. Um, but my dad, there's nothing like a father. Fathers love differently than mothers. There's nothing comparable to a father because fathers lead. They lead with love and compassion, and they are the key the household and you know we all grew up that way where you know dads led the household uh, moms had certain roles and held it down at work and in other spaces and you know now the roles have changed a bit sometimes you have mothers that are single parents you have fathers that are single parents you have a reversal dads that are at home dads and the mom I mean you see a mixture when you talk about the traditional role of family. and I'm okay with that I think we love differently as long as you instill values and principles in your children. You love them conditionally. You accept them for who they are and their identity, and you just love on them and give them the support that they need. It doesn't matter what type of household you live in. And that's important for our children right? because sometimes our children don't love outside of their home. They don't feel it in their community. They don't have safe spaces where they can feel love. And sometimes they're getting love in all the wrong places. But my dad was very special. He was a long time member of a labor union, 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 for 25 years at St. Louis. So as long as I my dad always had And the type of dad he was, he was everybody's dad. So in the neighborhood, dad would come to visit. He loved like buy us stuff. So all of my friends, they saw my dad coming down the street. They were like, oh, Vanessa, your dad is that means we're all gonna get ice cream because my dad didn't just take care of my brother and I, but he brought the whole name, ice cream, candy, food. So whenever my dad came, everybody knew about to eat. That's right. <laughs> it was. And, and I appreciate that because I'm the same way. If I eat, you eat, right? I need to make sure that my people and my children are taken care of. So I, I, I feel like I got a lot of that from my dad because he loved everybody. And if he couldn't do for everybody's kids, and he didn't do at all. So my dad always made sure I'm not taking kids with you and your brother. But if your friends want to eat, then everybody eats. Um, and so fond memories of my dad. I like that. Everybody eats. That's right. That's right. That's that we feel the same way. And I and I think that's like so very important that, you know, as a dad, you know, you're not just the father of your own children, right? When you're dad and your your outside dad, you everybody's dad. So right. you know, if something goes right, everything goes right. If something goes wrong, then hey, you gotta tell people right there, hey, nah, you shouldn't do that. So I think it's uh, it's really important, um, just that that you had the chance to have that experience. When I ask a secondary question real quick, follow up. Sure. When what was your favorite memory or your favorite thing to do with your father growing up? Oh, oh that's a good question. My dad, my dad loved to dance. You know, he Caribbean, so um, we love to do the, I, I, I call them, sorry, the Caribbean, uh, the basement bashment parties. <laughs> we love to do that because, you know, my dad lived in Flatbush, Brooklyn, and everybody Caribbean lived in Flatbush. <laughs> and, and when when I went to visit him and my grandma, it was like all Caribbean city. And you know, my dad loved the Labor Day parade. I mean, he was TNT through the bone. You know, again, this is Caribbean talk. So my dad had the Kango hat, but it was slanted because you got to you know, tilt the hat. And like my like my Caribbean people, he had a permanent gold tooth because mm. that's what we do. And again, my dad loved like his favorite. Favorite dish was curry chicken. It's my favorite dish. So I think I love to go to parties with my dad. My dad knew everybody. He was a friend to the whole neighborhood. So everybody invited us to the backyard party, to the barbecue. I mean, you know, we just like to have a good time. But, you know, one, one thing I always say is my dad knew the time to work and he knew the time to play. So <laughs> after work on the weekends when he didn't have to go to the hospital, that was our time, which was usually the weekends. So my favorite activities with my dad, I love those barbecues and the basement bashment part. I miss that's them. Great. Wow, that's beautiful. Big ups you, to having a good time. Big ups to family. You could, a, you could have a basement bashment party and not worry about people acting up and, you know, shooting each other. We used to have fun back then. I want to get back to that. That's right. And we were working on that. We were working mm -hmm. on that. I love that. That was a good question.
<laughs> What's your favorite thing to do with me? You got a favorite thing to do with me? What you like? I like to do a lot of things with you. <laughs> <laughs> cute. That's cute. Well, we try to cook. We try to have moments. I, I appreciate you for sharing what an impact that had on you, for real. And that's your favorite dish is something that, you know, he liked to cook. That's that's mm. beautiful to me. That's beautiful. I, I want to I wanna transition into this Women History Month questions really quick okay. because I think it's important. And if you could just ask that first Women History Month question real quick. Oh, you want me to lay it down? I lay it down. So being the first woman to sit as the Bronx Borough President, I'm sure there has been many challenges. Um, has there been anything um, that just has been challenging as a woman in this seat? Yes, I think my entire political career has been challenging being a woman and a woman of color. First being elected into South Carolina in the New York State Assembly representing the West Bronx. And it was hard for people to see me and realize that I was the elected official. You hardly saw a lot of women and lots of women in office. And I think over the years, more women started to run for all the makeup of bodies of government like the Assembly and the and the city council started to be more reflective of the city of New York, women, Latinx women, color. I think people started to see us in a different light. And it takes a while, even now, 22, women are shattering the glass in the city and state of New York. Never before. But sometimes we still have to fight the good fight for pay equity. It just came from city because city is equal pay day. African American and Latino women are not the same as our white men, but yet we have the same profession, the same education, and the same years of experience. And that's unacceptable. And, you know, there are so many different professions where women are doing great work on the front lines, but we're not paid equally. And that's not right. So, as a woman and being a first, you have to bar really high, but you also have to make sure you create a standard that applies all across the board. So, we have to kind of look at how can be a better government, how we can be a better city, a better state, and a better borough, right? And mm -hmm. it's not accept the status quo, but realize that we deserve better. We deserve to live in quality, safe health. We don't need, and we don't have to be subjected to violence and poverty and neighborhoods that are underinvested in and dirty parks and garbage overflowing. That's not what New York is about, and that's not what we are. About. But sometimes we get very complacent, and we think that. Uh, no one cares, and this is the way it is. And that's not the case. There are other neighborhoods that are far more, and ours can, should, right? And so for me, being a woman and a woman of color means you have to fight a little bit more, you have to fight a little harder, you may have to scream a little louder. It's all about realizing that you are here for a time and a reason and a season. And your season has to be meaningful, it has to be an impact, you have to make a difference, you have to create a legacy. But you also have to show the world what you're all about. Mm. As women and young ladies, we're judged before we even step in the door because of what we look like, right? Our zip code that we live in, or just the fact that we are women of color. We are often denied some opportunities. But I want to encourage women to not allow people to define who you are. Don't let anyone set your value. You set your value and you set your worth. And as long as you know your value and you refuse to accept anything less than what you are worth, you will continue to be successful. You may have to knock down people now to get ahead just because they don't respect your worth. They don't respect what you bring to the table. But you have to fight because you're not fighting for yourself. You're fighting for the next generation of young people. And I'm not talking about imposing harm on anyone, not at all. I'm <laughs> I'm just talking about being very firm in your position and not accepting what people tell you as it is. That is the status quo. And we can live with the status quo if we want, but we can defy the status quo, live better, and have an improved quality of life. Mm. Huh. Mm. That was a lot. <laughs> That's all true. And I and, and I think I think one of the things that I really like about you, I was I was telling the viewers before you came on. Is something that's special is that you occupied, you know, various roles from not only being a state assembly person, but also to be in the city council. And I think to bring in that understanding of city and state into fighting for our borough, it gives you this kind of unique understanding, this this, this perspective of 
how things could work, you know, and, and how things relate to the video picture. So uh, we are very, very, very happy to have you in this position and very, very lucky to have you be a part of leading this borough, for real. Um, I'm my beautiful daughter. Could you ask another question for us real quick? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, you can ask whatever question you want. You want to just ask the question? Go ahead. Which family member has been your greatest coach in life? We heard me speak about your father often, but do you think there was anyone else? Absolutely. My mom. My mom is my superhero, queen, partner, my number one supporter. Uh, she's still with us, 70 years young. And my mom has seen me through a lot. Uh, you know, sometimes we have scars that we don't see, and sometimes we have stories that you haven't heard. And no one would ever believe I am 42 years old, but I had a stroke when I was 24. What? I broke my leg. Um, I obviously had to take care of my dad when he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And I carried and walked with him all the way until he took his last breath. And then I planned his entire celebration of life. And I was in a wheelchair because I broke my leg. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes those endurances that you go through make stronger people. Sometimes they either break you or make you. And I refused to let my circumstances break me because I knew I was better than that. I knew I was that I was currently in. And I tried to be strong sometimes when you feel weak. And I'm grateful that I had a mom and dad that loved me so much. And my mom, who's still here with me, now I'm the one that's taking care of her as she has taken care of me. I'm her primary caregiver. I am, you know, her next of kin. I make sure that she's good in terms of her health care. I make sure she has everything she needs because that's what I am supposed to do because she did that for me. She sacrificed so much. Her and my dad, they worked endless hours so that I could have a better life, my brother and I. And I am grateful for that. Sometimes children don't realize the sacrifice of our parents until we get older, have our own children, and we sacrifice for them. Then you realize the sacrifice that your parents made. And I often have with my mom now um, in 2022 and I was so upset because she was a good parent and dad. I, I couldn't stay out late. I was one of those who had to be in the house, down, had to have homework done. I had chores. I had to work for money, right? And I didn't get a lot of money. And I used to get so upset with my mom because all my friends were able to stay out later. And then I used to be like, you know, I'm the dirty one because I was good in school and all the things that my mom really wanted for me. But like it because I didn't feel like I was a part of the popular. But I tell you, years later, you cherish those moments because mm -hmm. I have seen so many other children in households and households where they're not loved, where they are abused. You know, it, it's not pretty. And I am so thankful that I never had to experience that as a child. And so even though my mom and dad were strict, they loved me for that and they wanted to keep me safe and alive. And years later, I laughed Mom, because I thank her for loving me so much that now I can instill the same in my children and the children of the Bronx and the children that are in my family because of what my mom and dad instilled in me. Mm. Shout out to the moms. You hear me? Moms, stand out. Yes. Salute the moms. Shout out to the queens. Shout out to all the mothers. You hear me? Uh, on behalf of Bronx Fathers, without, without you, there'd be no us. So <laughs> we need the moms. <laughs> We need the moms. Shout out to the moms. This is Women History Month. We're going to say shout out to the moms. Put some hearts up for the mothers, man. We mm -hmm. we appreciate the moms. We we are so thankful. We we need that. And, and just to hear, I mean, it really, it's really cool to me as a parent and with my daughter being here. It's really cool. And I hope you're taking it in just, you know, just to hear that, you know, these things that your parents are, you know, for, forcing you and pushing you in that direction, it often leads to higher ground. And, you know, I think you're a beautiful product of that. And I think um, we're lucky. And so I know I, we really respect your time, so we don't want to take up too much, but we do want to ask you maybe two more beautiful questions. Yep. I'm going to say one. She's going to say one, all right? Who well, you want to finish it or you want me to finish it? Which one? You want to finish it? All right, fine. So, hey, queen. Um, <laughs> so that's great. So so I'm going to go this one or you want to go this one? Which one? All right, perfect. All right, so I'm going to say, what would you tell young women who are, just starting to work and what would you like them to know? I know you've touched it in many ways, you know, throughout this, but if it was just like, you know, just 
you know, just a, a small synopsis of you, something you could tell young women and something you think they should know. Absolutely. I say to all the young ladies out there, you are queens. And I want you to love yourself enough to never accept anything less than what you deserve. Never allow anyone to mistreat you and to not give you what you rightfully deserve. You are destined for success no matter what you say, no matter what happens, no matter what circumstance you find yourself in. I want you to love enough to know what you are worth in this society. I want you to know that it is your responsibility to get back to the very same community that has nurtured and groomed you to be where you are today. Mm. As a generation of leaders, you have a wonderful opportunity to dare to dream big and to hope to be successful, to be to be encouraged, to be empowered, to be any everything you want to be. Find whatever profession it is that you love and be good at it. Surround yourself with people that help you, not hurt you. Create a circle. Your circle doesn't have to be big. Your circle can be tight, but let it be effective. Let it be a reflection of you, of who you are as a queen. And make sure, as I did, find an internship. Don't think that a $100,000 job will fall in your life, because it may not. There are doors of opportunity that will open for you, but sometimes you have to start small, but you have to think big. You start small, but you plan big. You have short-term goals, and you have long-term goals. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Don't let anyone dim your light, but you have to shine bright and hold your head up high as a diva, as a queen. Know who you are and know that there are examples of incredible women leaders around you, like your borough president, like your district attorney, like the city council members in the Bronx. There are so many women, Latina women, Asian American women, black women that are representing you, that look just like you, that come from the same neighborhood, same struggles. And guess what? We did it. And we are a living witness of all hard work paying off. And my ladies, now it's your turn. We started this journey and we set the footprints, but I want you to step in those footprints. But guess what? I want you to create your own because it's your time to shine and it's your time to be bold, courageous, and be exactly who God has ordained for you to be. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's beautiful. Make sure people share this. I hope you are sharing this. Share this. Share this wonderful footage that we got here. This wonderful access that she's given us. Thank you so much for being so so open and so direct. I right, and definitely Ariana, would you like to What is one thing that you wish more people knew about women in a workspace? Like how do they feel or how to treat them? I wish more people in this world appreciated, valued the important contributions of women. I wish that we didn't have to wait to Women's History Month or a celebration for women to be recognized for all the work they have already been doing. Women have always been on the front lines. And I think now society is finally catching up to the beauty that we already have, to the talents that we've already put, to the love and passion that we have for our people, for our children. When we invest women, you are investing in children, in our families, because every issue is a woman's issue. Every issue is a human rights issue. Every issue has a woman's component, I assure you. And I just wish that women didn't have to work so hard just to get basic recognition. I wish that we didn't have to fight as much as we do just to get paid fairly and equitably. I wish that we didn't have to do as much as we have done just to get recognized. There's so many things that women have done, unseen and seen, unheard and heard, that we've never gotten credit for. But a lot of times it's about a season and it's about a purpose. I think about one thing that Sojourner Truth said many, many years ago as a pioneer who freed slaves, who freed slaves in the South so that they could migrate to Northern Africa. And she said she tried her best she wished that she could free more slaves, but guess what? They didn't know they were slaves. And, and that's very telling because I think sometimes we don't recognize our own value, our own worth. And sometimes we allow other people to define who we are. And slowly but surely, we're gaining ground. 
We are shattering glass ceilings. We're defying the odds every day. And we are reshaping and reimagining government working for all people, for women, for men, for children, for seniors, for veterans, for fathers, for mothers. And I think, you know, organizations like Bronx Fathers really recognizes the value of fathers, but also of all of the women that stand at our sides, at your sides, doing this great work. So to me, it's hope. It's about opportunity. It is about a new day. It is about hope for a better tomorrow. But it also is about planting seeds for our young people to grow. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for putting the bow on that. Thank you so much. Give it up for our borough president. Give it up for her guys. Here we go. Thank Let's you. Give it up. Let's give it up. We're so fortunate to have us. And I hope you know just um, everyone watching just what a priority she made this uh, conversation. And just to be so open and just to share, um, it really means the world of us. So definitely give it up. Definitely give it up. And we thank you. I'm going to give it up to my lovely co-host. You know what I mean? My question asking extraordinaire, you know, see where her future, how far she goes, uh, standing on the shoulders of a beautiful giant that she's fortunate enough to be around. For real. Um, anything else you want to add? Anything? Any other questions? She wants to know your favorite color. She was asking me. Red. <laughs> Red. All <laughs> about <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> and I'm wearing it today. <laughs> right, and you look beautiful in it. Well, th we thank you so much. Um, anything else you want to say to the people? You know, um, you definitely got that right. We definitely we love the moms over here. So shout out to all the moms, all the women. Um, just our organization wouldn't be possible without the help of of the many women who have advocated and and have definitely opened the doors for us. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to Monica. Shout out to Bronx Education. Everybody in the Bronx Education Department. Um, shout out to the borough president, the deputy borough president, um, just the wonderful things and the doors that you guys have opened for so many women. The Women's History Month celebration was beautiful at the Botanical Gardens, you know. You. Um, you are definitely doing big, beautiful things, and we are so happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much to you both for being great co-hosts, and I look forward to more uh, Bronx Fathers taking up conversations uh, on Instagram Live, because I think it's important to identify the voices of young people and talk about issues that are relevant to everyday New Yorkers. Issues around equity, around fair justice, around uh, higher education, the pathway to college, economic development. We are preparing for a spring summer season. So I definitely want to talk about summer youth and jobs like summer bridge initiatives that we're rolling out this summer for young people. Applications for the youth employment program are open. Um, so I definitely encourage you to go to our Site, bronxpp.nyc.gov or the city's website www.nyc.gov please make sure you are 14 to 4 years old you want to continue to give young people space and opportunities that they can do jobs in the summertime this is like our first summer years after the pandemic so you know it's going to be a hot summer and we just want to make sure people have jobs they have summer camp the pools are open. We have all these initiatives like Saturday Night Lights, our park, rec centers. We just want to have so many activities for our kids that they don't have to worry about engaging in violence and all this other negativity around them. They can say, you know what? I can't stand on the corner with you, brother, because I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to get ready for work. That's what I want to hear. I'm so tired. I got to work tomorrow. That's what I want to hear from young people because I feel that way and I still go to work every day. But again, I want to thank our Director of Education for Youth, Monica Major. Thank you to Angel and to Nita and our Deputy, our President, Janet Piguero, and really everyone. We're going to continue to open doors for women and women of color at Borough Hall. And we're going to make this office as it should be it's reflective of the diversity of the Bronx, of the talent and the professions and the experience that Bronxites will bring to the table. So Bronx Borough Hall is your hall, and we look forward to our representation and continuing to be your voice at Borough Hall. That's right. That's right. We're going to put up our exits to that. You know what I mean? Because this is very near and dear to people in the Bronx. Because we yeah. have Bronx pride, and we have pride for reasons that you just made. You hear me? That's the reason we have pride. So thank you so much. Shout out to Angel. Shout out to Monica. Shout out to everybody that makes these things possible. Thank you so much, our beautiful Borough President, for joining us today. And um, I hope everybody sees and shares this. She just told you guys about summer youth jobs, man. She said, get your kids a job. Help them make some money. Yeah, right. and stay out of trouble because it's the first summer and it's going to be hot. We agreed with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be hot. <laughs> it's going to be hot. 
Well, thank you so much, man. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for your time, bro, President. We thank love you. Can't wait to see you soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Shout out, shout out, man. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of this, guys. And um, keep on, keep your eyes open. Be on the lookout for our next uh, talk that we're going to have, our next virtual conversation. If you're a community group and you have a chance of something that could be interesting to you, be sure to join in, send information, hit us in a DM. We would love to have you featured, and we would love to collaborate with you in any way that we can. Um, and any information that you need following up on, make sure we reach out to Andrew God or just send us a DM. Um, shout out to all of the mothers. And we are we are a dad group. No, we are mother lovers. We love the mothers. So shout out to all of the moms. Without y'all, it could be no us. And um, shout out to my co-host one more time before I, before we close out, you know? Thank you. You did so good. Wrong father's taking action. This is what it looks like. This is what taking action looks like. You see it? You know, having a chance and giving access. The best thing you can give your kids is perspective and share your experiences, you know. So um, I'm really happy about this. This went really well. And um, this was great. Thank you, babe. All right, guys. Have a great day. See y'all later. Shout out to Swagger Dad. Shout out to everybody that checked in. Shout out to all the groups. <laughs> Bye. Two, 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 two.